Welcome back to Bloomberg News. I'm Mark Crumpton in New York. Thanks for staying with us. Over the next two hours, we're fortunate to be joined by one of the most highly regarded money managers in the business. David Winters is a veteran international value investor who is CEO of Wintergreen Advisors and manager of the Wintergreen Fund. The fund ranks in the 99th percentile for its performance year to date among its peers. David joins us now with his perspective on the markets. David, welcome back to Bloomberg. Always good to have you on. Thanks so much. Mark, great to be here with you and Lori. Uh, uh, talk to us about what's going on in the market, specifically the, the psychology of it. We're still seeing some hesitancy. I don't know if I'd go so far as to call it fear, but some people are hesitant. And what happened a couple of Thursdays ago with that flash crash didn't help matters much. What sense are you getting? I think people, Mark, you're absolutely right, are frightened. And they're either afraid to invest. And you know, we really think that people should be thinking long term that you know problems there have been all kinds of problems in the world and if you think over time the thing to do usually is when everything's on sale is to be looking for bargains so why specifically are you more optimistic about the future can the world work out its fiscal problems I think the world is going to probably re reinflate Lori and probably debase currencies and do things that are the easy way out um, and then ultimately you know the problems will be solved but you've got to own the right types of investments that can capitalize in the world we live in. But will those problems be solved in the short term? Is this that band-aid to cancer approach where people are saying, you know, right now, you know, we're not, we're not looking a couple of years now. We need to stop the bleeding now. Is that a cause for concern? Oh, absolutely. But I think that there are things that can be done in the short run to solve the problems. But I think that there's no magical solution. But I think that basically there'll be more debt issued. There'll be reorganizations of companies and countries. Um, but I think that currencies are going down. So play this out, though, in terms of your investment strategy. You're on the record. You say you look for global value with a flexible investment mandate. So that said, how have you accounted recently for this euro crisis? Well, quite candidly, we own almost no euros. Okay, well, that was, was that hindsight? Like, did you plan on that, or? We didn't see this crisis coming. So this was a luck move, perhaps? I huh. think it was really, we, we go where the opportunity is, and we just didn't see the opportunities in the eurozone. We have a lot of money in Switzerland. Yeah, the Swiss franc, I was reading up about you as well. That's a big holding, no? Right, so Switzerland is not part of the euro. It's a very solvent country. It's got some very good businesses that are global. So, you know, we've tried to earn our money for our investors all over the planet. But to go back to Mark's question, this is just going to take time. It has to take time. So th this was not a question where before all of this started in the euro region that you thought the euro was radioactive. You were just being a little bit more foresighted and looking beyond putting all your eggs in that basket. Yeah, why didn't you see any opportunity in yeah. Europe, say, a year ago? Well, you know, we have money in the U.K., but we have, again, most of our money in Switzerland. We found the best companies with the best characteristics and with the best fundamentals, and that's where we went for. And those economies work out better in your view, too? Absolutely. All right. So let's talk more about this trifecta, getting back yeah. to your investment <laughs> strategy. Companies with good and improving economies, as we just addressed, generating free cash flow in different currencies. You like the franc. You've always been away from the euro. Management, and, and this is really what I want to drill down on in this next question, is management interested in making money for all the shareholders? So how do you make that determination? You know, we've learned over time that people are critical whether they're in the U.S., whether they're in Latin America, whether they're in Asia. You know, if the people wake up every day, management, and say, I want to make more money for all shareholders, that makes a huge difference, Lori. But, but might I ask, because it seems like a simple philosophy, why isn't everybody adhering to that? You know, oftentimes things that are simple, Mark, aren't so easy to do. Why not? I think that it takes discipline. And I think it takes work. You know, you have to go meet with people. You have to really study a lot of the documents. And you have to see how have people behaved in the course of time. And I think that the pressures that we see, and you see in your business as well, is short term. Yeah. The third point to your trifecta, low price in relationship to value. So how do you determine value? Is this just a simple price to earnings ratio? PE is one thing, but really what you're trying to do is to figure out, you know, how much is something worth today and can you get the future for free? And so if you can get a big discount, and you know, there's numbers, each business has a different way to look at it. You know, the way that you might look at, uh, you know, a company producing, you know, consumer product 
is a little different from the way you would look at a mining company. But given what's happened in the global economy, what's happened over the past couple of years, all the numbers seem to suggest that we may be finally digging our way out of this. But is that template applicable when things seem to be spinning out of control? I think it's even more applicable, Mark. Really? Because I think if you do the work and you stay rational, and uh, it's really, and the period of time where everybody is essentially hiding under their desks, yeah. that's when you get, you know, the great opportunities. And at some point, the world is going to get better. Okay, but what is what is your sense of how people stay rational in an environment that a lot of people say golden treasuries, for yeah, example. A lot of people say the environment is irrational. Well, I think that, you know, gold, we own a little bit of gold. Uh -huh. um, treasuries, you know, you get paid almost nothing to own treasuries. And, you know, you can buy some of the highest quality equities in the world with yields far in excess of treasuries with the possibility that their dividends go up. So we think that that gives you inflation protection, downside protection. Thoughts on gold prices? I think gold's going up. Even beyond current levels. Look, I've sort of been a bull on gold since 200. But, you know, we're in a world. <laughs> well, that certainly worked out for you. <laughs> you know, I wish you owned more. But, you know, the, the thing about what's going on is that currencies are being debased. You know, it goes back to Mark's, I think, excellent question about, well, how are we going to deal with this problem? So we've got to print more debt. So if there's more sovereign debt, it becomes worthless. Currencies are trending down. So you really need to own businesses that have pricing power. And you brought along some stock picks with you, and we'll really, really get into them a little bit later. But for example, just off the top here, Nestle is one of those companies you see with tremendous pricing yeah, power. Absolutely. Over the long term, you know, again, when you go back in time, when we were kids, which wasn't that long ago, a chocolate bar cost a fraction of what it costs today. And over time, the price of chocolate bar is going to go up. Pet food. People love their pets more than their relatives. Yes, we do. <laughs> and that's a big component of Nestle's business. Um, you also say that uh, the world doesn't appreciate Nestle. So, again, you're kind of, if you see so much potential in Nestle, why doesn't the rest of the world? I think the world is, is very, very short-term in focus. People want to make their money in the next five minutes. Yeah. And it's just, it's not the way people get rich. Okay.